we're gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and reconvene the Parker Town Council meeting at 708 p.m. Council please sign in all council members are present with the exception of Councilman Josh Martin and Councilwoman Amy Holland who are out sick today we have a couple uh, any youngsters scouts in the audience I know we've got some youngsters Girl Scouts Boy Scouts She's you, you're saying shush because she... yeah. oh shush for them. okay well if everyone would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance then I thought she was shushing me all right I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all awesome all right first item on our agenda tonight is a uh, special recognition I'm actually going to come down there if council if you guys are cool with that as we were sitting here talking about sports um, I want to point out something though with our council up here we have two graduates from Ponderosa <laughs> High School right now. So uh, John Dyer, you were what, class of 88? 88. 88. I was a homeroom mother. Jo <laughs> <laughs> you were like 12. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Josh Rivero is class of 90. 90, and I knew that because I actually knew, well, I didn't know I knew him then. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I graduated in 91 from El Dorado, where Ponderosa's athletic director, Tim Ottman, graduated from, by the way. A little bit older than me. He was 76. I graduated in 91. Josh went to high school in West Mesa in Albuquerque. <coughs> we both ran track and we both stunk at it, so we probably ran against each other and didn't even know it. And now here we are. He graduated <laughs> from Ponderosa later and is sitting up here on town council. I bring all that up because I am a proud uh, Mustang parent, and one of the cool things that I quickly learned about Ponderosa is <coughs> Not only do they have a superb athletic, or excuse me, a superb academic program uh, at Ponderosa, but they also have an incredible athletic program. And at Ponderosa, not only, you know, the teams that you'd expect, baseball, football, things like this, but you've even got um, Junior Olympic competitive, national competitive fencers. I know that because he sleeps in my house at night every night. <laughs> um, but I found out soon after that that my son wasn't the only cool dude who does big stuff outside of of, uh, of our small community. We have Colton Schultz, who I am honored tonight. Colton, would you come down for me real quick? Um, you might all think that Colton could be my bodyguard. He probably could. Uh, I was going to have him come down and, sh and demonstrate us a few moves, but I'm worried about throwing my back out. Um, and also the fact that I think his neck is as big around as my waist. So, Colton, on behalf of your town council, on behalf of the 50,000 citizens who call Parker home, I have a little something I want to read for you tonight. Okay, this is a proclamation. Whereas Colton Schultz is a high school junior, junior, and member of the wrestling team at Ponderosa High School, and whereas Colton Schultz holds the Colorado 5A individual state champion title for the 220 pound bracket, we're both 220 pound, <laughs> I mean, <all> right. <laughs> bracket for 2016 and 2017, and whereas Colton Schultz won a gold medal at the 2017 Cadet Greco-Roman World Championship in Athens, Greece. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> and whereas Colton Schultz is the first American Cadet Greco-Roman wrestler to win a world championship since 1997. <laughs> We have resolved that we hereby recognize Colton Schultz for his hard work, dedication, and accomplishments. In witness thereof, I have here unto signed my hand the 16th day of October, 2017. Colton Schultz Day, you are the man. Woo! Woo! I saw Colton earlier, and he he, uh, he actually missed wrestling practice to come to this. So, <laughs> he's going now. He's going now. He's going to practice now. 
All right, so next item up on our agenda is our Parker Chamber of Commerce updates. I know Dennis Houston is out sick tonight. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff going around, so uh, he's not here for that. So we're going to go ahead and skip that and go to public comments. This is an opportunity for you to come and address council on items that are currently not on the agenda. If you're here for an item that is on the agenda, there'll be a moment of public comment at that time for those items. So these are items that are not on our agenda. There's a three minute time limit. You'll see a clock above me and uh, no action will be taken on these items. So anyone here for general public comment? This is your time. If you'll state your name and address for the record, please. <laughs> Would you hit the button on your, yeah, you on your, on the mic right? I don't, because I don't think it's on. Better? There you go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so we just came from, or at least I did, came from a meeting where they're putting in commercial product uh, over in uh, Pine Bluffs. The challenge is that um, the, the Pine Bluffs um, for the our building, they their plat did not show an entry into the residential area they're actually making a residential entry onto Shady Ridge Road on their plat. So for Cobalt's 3B plat, it actually shows Crooked Pine. So anybody when buying a house was misrepresented by Toll and Cobalt because they approved the plat that didn't show an entrance. And now they're showing a major entrance directly onto a residential street for both access to their commercial product and exit. It's one of three accesses and they did not mark it anywhere as you would see like a normal fence or a normal street where you guys do where you have like a the yellow post and it actually tells you there's a street coming in here they didn't do that and so it's literally coming into pine bluffs our neighborhood and um, misrepresenting it to us because they're doing it in two separate ones a use by special review and then a second one for the commercial make sense okay. thank, you. thank you very much okay anyone else for public comment all right, seeing none. Uh, let's see, John, are you in the room? I was looking for John. Who says he's not in the room? Jason's in the back. Oh, Jerry is by there. Jason, would you mind looking into that about uh, what Scott just brought up about the plat and getting back to him and following up for it? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, um, next item up is, is reports, items, comment for mayor and council. John? All right, thank you, mayor. Um, See, last week, uh, actually the, the 3rd and the 4th of October, uh, part of my Dr. Cog position, I hosted four executive director candidates. I uh, had a lengthy uh, meet and greet as well as uh, interview process with them. And uh, this Wednesday, we are going to recommend a uh, uh, executive director candidate for that. So we will fill that permanent position. And uh, Thursday on the 12th, I attended an E470 budget workshop. Uh, Chair Martin, um, Actually, Councilmember Martin, who is the chair for E470, uh, did a fantastic job. A couple of items. Traffic is up 4.9% for the tollway. Uh, the revenues are 115% of budget for this year, and expenses are 88% of budget. So it looks like things are going very well at E470. Okay. Debbie. Um, I've been out of town uh, for eight days, just got back uh, for council this evening. I was in Houston. Um, I can say that some of the things that um, that you see on television are different when you see them in person. Uh, some of the people down there uh, have had more than uh, their share of, of bad luck. And it was quite amazing that the pockets, it, it, it kind of had no rhyme or reason on where the flooding took place. There's still a, a lot of devastation that has happened or evidence of it of where it had happened but uh quite a resilient uh city and the cleanup is still in process but i was amazed that uh how much has 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 been accomplished and at least the folks that i was with uh um, they they are appreciative even though they didn't need the blood of what our community here in Parker did and in helping to have blood go go to Houston awesome and I have the most beautiful granddaughter in the whole world oh. <laughs> just saying earlier I said you were coming in from Dallas sorry no no it's, the other the other one Renee 
So this week I have the um, pleasure of attending an engaged leadership training program at Parker Police Station with some of our finest police officers and some town employees and some police members from other communities. So thrilled to be partaking in that and thank you for the opportunity, you guys. <laughs> Josh. Uh, got back from fall break, had a great, uh, great few days off. Um, came back today to a, a liaison meeting with uh, communications and just want to state that they are doing an outstanding job. One of the things we heard during the last campaign was uh, communications were uh, communications from the town, from the government to the citizens were lacking. It was hard for citizens to find information. It was hard to get the information out to the citizens in a way that they wanted to hear it. Um, so we've taken leaps and bounds um, using everything, Facebook, Instagram, um, to Twitter, to everything. And there's a lot of great programs coming up from Meet Your Staff to video tours of the town facilities on Instagram to obviously live streaming the, uh, the council meetings. Um, there'll be a, a ton of stuff. So please, please, please follow us everywhere you can on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Um, go to the website. There's plenty of links on the website. But uh, the information isn't out there. Work with us, and, uh, and we'll definitely get the information out to you. All right, awesome. In addition to all my normal stuff, I just wanted to take this moment to just uh, say thank you, specifically Dr. Milan sitting in the audience back over here with South Metro Fire. Um, South Metro Fire just sent, was it a group of four? Two? 41s. Yeah, so a group of four to go help with the California, with the, everything that's going on in California right now. Hats off to them, hats off to you guys for stepping up to do that and just to ask everyone in the audience and everyone watching on Facebook to keep them in your prayers as they're out there helping with the, the wildfires and the fallout from all of that. So, Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right, so um, next item on our agenda is our consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine. They're enacted with one motion and one vote unless a council member asks to have one something removed for further discussion. So council with that, I would entertain further discussion or a motion on consent agenda items 6A through 6D. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Josh and a second from Renee. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is our town administrators report. Now our town administrators on vacation, our deputy town administrators on vacation. We got some engineer dudes <laughs> sitting in here. Um, <laughs> I, I was telling the folks behind me, they had to go deep in the bullpen to find me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured as an engineer, you had some like Gantt charts or spreadsheets or something. <laughs> right. you, Nothing no? this evening. All right. Mayor. All right. We'll move on. Just for those watching too, and for those in the audience, if you're ever curious, our town administrators report is available online on our website. And it's something that's updated. Is it quarterly now or two months? Ever It's updated quarterly. Got lots of facts and figures and pie charts and graphs and, and things going on around town. Make sure you bookmark it and check it out on a regular basis uh, don't print it out because that wastes paper just look at it electronically it's on your phone or it's on your computer so all right with that we're gonna move on to um, items number item number eight which is public hearings council I'm gonna go ahead and read in with you if you guys are okay with this I'm gonna read in 8a all of the items and 8b all of the items Jim can we do C as well or is it just 8a and B we have to just 8A and B. Those are the two. So, yeah. These are different subjects. So um, they, because all of those items are related and can be really gone over in one presentation, Council, you will have to have uh, seven different, is it seven points or six, There's six different six. points once we get to it. So everyone hold on. I'm not going to try to do this in one breath because I will pass out with this being so long. But let me go ahead and read this in. Item 8A is Highlands at King Point Property. Eight, uh, A1 is resolution number 17-052, which is a resolution to set forth count, town council's findings of fact and conclusions as to the eligibility of the Highlands at King Point Property for annexation into the town of Parker. Item number two is ordinance number 2.253 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance approving and accomplishing the annexation of contiguous unincorporated territory known as the Highlands at Kings Point Property in Douglas County. County. Item number three is ordinance number 3.331 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance zoning certain property within the town of Parker, Colorado, known as Highlands at King Point property to PD plan development district pursuant to the town of Parker land development ordinance and amending the zoning ordinance and map to conform therewith. Item number four is the annexation agreement for Highlands at King Point property. Um, 
8B is Kings Point Way right of way property annexation. And uh, item B1 is resolution number 17-053. This is a resolution to set forth town council's findings of fact and conclusions as to the eligibility of the Kings Point Way right of way property for annexation into the town of Parker. And uh, B2 is ordinance number 2.254 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance approving and accomplishing the annexation of contiguous unincorporated territory known as the Kings Point Way right of way property in Douglas County. Before we start the presentation, because that was crazy, long for those watching and for those who are sitting here for the first time going what the heck was that long reading thing in going on all of these are for to annexation of property into the town of Parker bringing something that is not currently in the town of Parker into the town of Parker but one of the things you all have to understand and remember is that annexation is just like marriage both parties have to agree to it this is not eminent domain taking something from somebody else a property owner must want to become part of the town and the town must want that property to become part of the town or else we don't sit here and have this dance and go through this long explanation so what you're all are about to see is the public hearings on all of the pieces legally needed to bring a piece of property into the town of Parker through annexation so with that, we got like 800 people in the room here tonight, guys. Who's going to take the lead? Which one of you three? <laughs> you see everyone just pass the buck down the, down the way? All right. I'll be doing Carolyn, the presentation this evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a request by Douglas County Associates to annex and zone approximately 20 acres of land into the town of Parker for commercial and open space purposes. Additionally, the town proposes to annex the related Kings Point Way right-of-way to provide access to the subject property and benefit the town's overall transportation plan. Appropriate verification of required public notice has been provided. On September 19, 2016, Town Council approved the pre-annexation agreement for the Highlands at Kings Point property, which required the dedication of the right-of-way for the construction of Kings Point Way. On August 21st, Town Council set the, uh, 2017, Town Council set the public hearing for the Highlands at Kings Point property and the Kings Point Way right-of-way annexation petitions for October 16th, 2017. On October 2nd, 2017, Town Council unanimously approved the first reading for both annexations and the zoning request. Approval of this zoning request will create two planning areas, Planning Area 1, located on the west side of E-470, is approximately 15.45 acres and will be zoned for commercial uses. The commercial zoning for PA-1 consists primarily of retail sales, restaurant, and other sales tax generating uses. Planning Area 2, located on the east side of E-470, is approximately 3 acres and will be zoned as private open space. Planning Area 2 is located north of the existing detention pond for the Stone Canyon Apartments and does not currently have access. That's the parcel of land the little red arrow is pointing to and as you can see, uh, PA2 is blocked from access to Cottonwood Drive by both this detention pond and the adjacent residential development. Because there is no access and maintenance would be problematic, the town, town declined acceptance of PA2 as public open space. The Town of Parker proposes to annex the future Kings Point right, uh, Way right-of-way into the Town of Parker. Both of these properties are contiguous to the town and meet the statutory requirements for annexation. The Parker 2035 Master Plan identifies the Highlands at Kings Point property as mixed use within the E-470 corridor. This designation recommends higher intensity uses, including multifamily, senior housing, assisted living facilities, office retail, and restaurants. The proposed plan development to allow commercial sales tax generating uses is consistent with the Parker 2035 master plan. All utility providers have indicated that they can provide service subject to utility improvements through submission and approval of construction plans. As a requirement of the pre-annexation agreement, this section of Kings Point right-of-way was deeded to the town at no cost. The town has agreed to construct the roadway as a capital project to provide improved transportation links. 
the allowed uses in PA1 within the Highlands at Kings Point development are limited to those that are sales tax generating. This is to offset the cost of the construction of Kings Point Way as a capital project. The Kings Point Way right away is situated between the proposed Highlands at Kings Point development and the existing Vantage Point development. The owner of the Highlands at Kings Point development also owns a parcel of land north of the subject property that is identified as Kings Point South and is zoned for single family residential development within the city of Aurora. Kings Point Way will provide access to this new residential area and to the services that will be available uh, at the Highlands at Kings Point commercial development. The transportation master plan adopted by the Town Council in 2015 identifies a future collector road that connects Cottonwood Drive to the planned Aurora Parkway within the city of Aurora. This collector road is an important element in our transportation system that will improve the connections to Aurora, provide relief to the Cottonwood Drive Parker Road intersection, and increase access to the Crown Point commercial area for economic development purposes. Staff has reviewed the Highlands at Kings Point property proposal and have determined that the project is consistent with the master plan, provides adequate access, infrastructure, drainage facilities, and design considerations, has confirmed capacity and availability from utility providers, and satisfies the nine criteria required in the land development ordinance to rezone the property. In terms of the annexation, it is contiguous to the town and does meet the statutory requirements for annexation. Staff has reviewed the Highlands at Kings Point. Oop, I didn't change the slide. Mm -hmm. Staff has reviewed the Kings Point Way right of way proposal and has determined that the project is consistent with the transportation master plan provides improved connection to Aurora and provides relief to local roadways, increases access to Crown Point commercial area, and is also contiguous to the town, meeting the statutory requirements for annexation. On October 12, 2017, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the Highlands at Kings Point development zoning. Staff is recommending approval of resolution number 17.052, ordinance number 2.253, and ordinance number 3.331, and the annexation agreement for annexation of the Highlands at Kings Point property. Staff also is recommending approval of resolution number 17.053 and ordinance number 2.254 for the annexation of Kings Point Way right of way. Staff would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Carolyn, thank you very much. Council, do you have any questions before we have the applicant? No? Is the applicant available? Sir, They come are on. here this evening. Excellent. Do you have anything else you'd like to add to the presentation, sir? No, I think that was a great presentation by staff. All right. Thank you very much. We, this is a public hearing, so we will open it up for public comment at 7.31 p.m. if there's anyone here to address council on this item. Seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.31 p.m. and I'll entertain further discussion or six separate items that require six different motions, guys. <laughs> I move to approve resolution number 17-052. Second. We have a motion by Josh and a second by Renee. Council, please vote. <laughs> motion passes unanimously. I move to approve <coughs> ordinance number 2.253 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh and a second by Renee. Okay. Council, please vote. Oh, wait, we're going too fast. So let just hold that thought for a second there. <whistles> All right, go ahead and or vote. Council, please vote. I'll do the second. I'll do the last. Everybody, go ahead and vote. vote. Debbie. Debbie. Yeah, we're good. All right, motion passes unanimously. I'll go slower. <laughs> I move to approve ordinance number 3.331 on second reading. Second. Ditto. Motion by Josh, second by Renee. Council, please vote. 
Motion passes unanimously. And the annexation agreement? I move to approve the annexation agreement for Highlands Ranch at Kings Point based Wait, upon staff. Say, say that again. I move to approve the annexation agreement for Highlands at Kings Point. You, you said Highlands Ranch. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> did, we Wait, did we just take yeah, court? Yeah, we just annexed yeah, Highlands yeah, Ranch. Sorry. <laughs> All right, one more, one more time. I move to approve the annexation agreement for Highlands at Kings Point based upon staff findings. Second. <laughs> Motion by Josh and a second by Renee. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. We had about 80,000 people out there just grab at their hearts when they <laughs> thought that he annexed Highlands Ranch. All right, uh, with, with the next two items for items 8B. All right, I move to approve resolution number 17-053. Second. Motion by John and a second by Debbie. Council, please vote. You do. Yeah. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, I move to approve ordinance number 2.254 on second reading. Second. Motion by Debbie, or <laughs> motion by John, second by <laughs> Debbie. Council, please vote. Ooh. Motion passes unanimously. Next item on our agenda is item uh, 8C which is a public hearing for lot 4C, Lincoln Meadows filing two, amendment one, use by special review. Paul, look, they just all took off and left you, seriously? Oh. Wow, dude, you just, you. All right. It's my reputation. It's your reputation, now. exactly, it's the beard. <laughs> all right, Paul, you're up. Okay, good evening, Mr. Mayor, and members of council. Um, as was just alluded to, the next case this evening is case Z17-009, used by special review for auto detailing. Uh, please note that the applicant has provided the appropriate notification affidavits indicating that they have legally noticed uh, this, this hearing. Subject property of the request is located at the southwest corner of Lincoln and Dransfeld, highlighted in the red box there. Uh, it's currently zoned within the Lincoln Meadows plan development for commercial uses. Uh, um, auto service stations, including but not not including auto body and engine repair, are required to receive a use by special review approval within that PD. Um, it is current. The site is currently designated as um, Central Commercial District within the Town Master Plan. The site was originally approved for development back in 2004, with a site plan amendment approved subject to conditions in 2012 to allow for outdoor windshield chip repair. The site itself is 1.5 acres and the existing building is about 6,600 square feet. The blue circle indicated on the slide indicates the three self-serve wash bays that would be converted should the use by special review be approved. And the white circle is the location for the existing windshield chip repair, which is the subject of one of the recommended conditions this evening. Again, the request is to enclose those three self-serve wash bays uh, for auto detailing. The western two bays would be enclosed for the auto detailing use, and the easternmost bay would be enclosed for, uh, for an accessory office use associated with that. <clears throat> These are the nine um, criteria for approval for use by special review. Staff will not go through each of these individually. However, they are detailed within your staff report. Uh, simply to say that the the application has dem in staff's opinion and planning commissions that the application has demonstrated compliance uh, with the nine criteria. So as it relates to the approval from 2012, um, there was a site plan amendment approved subject to several conditions. One of those conditions being that the accessory use, i.e. the windshield chip repair, is not specified for one person or company, but shall be approved in perpetuity with the property owner until such time as that site plan is amended. Uh, at this time, in association with the use by special review, there is a site plan amendment submitted. At this time, given the request by the applicant and the, um, the constraints on the site, staff is recommending a condition of approval from town council that the applicant continue to work with staff to relocate that windshield chip repair operation to the west side of the property. Uh, responses from referral agencies. All referral agencies have responded that they have no conflict with this request. And to date, staff has not received any public comments related to this request. On September 28th of this year, Planning Commission voted 7 to 0 to recommend approval subject to three conditions for the requested use by special review to convert the three self-serve car wash bays to auto detailing and office space. And that would conclude staff's presentation. However, uh, staff and the applicant are both available for any questions you might have. 
Awesome. Council, do you have any questions for Paul? Uh, no. No? All right. If the applicant is available, come Mr. on Mr. Mayor, down. Uh, Mr. Ritchie from Ritchie's Car Wash is available to answer any questions. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, before we go to public comment, for those watching at home and for those in the audience, just to know what this actually is that we're talking about, in terms of land use, there's three buckets that it falls into. Uh, when something, a piece of land is zoned for something, it has what's called a use by right. And if it's zoned for that and it's used by right, then the owner of the land has the legal right to do that there. If it's not a permitted use, then even if the owner of the land wants to do it, they can't do it there. And then in between, there's this use by special review where there's certain things that require additional level of scrutiny. Those are those nine items that Paul had up there earlier. So that's what the difference is of what we're hearing tonight. So with that, I'll open it up for public comment at 7.38 p.m. if there's anyone here wishing to uh, give testimony on this item. Seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.38 p.m. and I'll entertain further discussion or a motion, got please. A, just a quick question. I just want to, uh, Mr. Ritchie, um, uh, to, to Mr. Thomas Frank, I, I appreciated the uh, the project narrative in the letter addressing the nine criteria specifically as to uh, the business. I thought that was very well done, and and, and uh, it went uh, it went a long way in my book. Um, I was actually there one day, and Mr. Ritchie was walking around talking about uh, about doing this um, and uh, and taking a poll as to whether or not the detailing shop was a good idea. And I I remained anonymous, but I thought it was very interesting that uh, that he was uh, was looking at this and trying to better his business. Um, I will say that I, I would appreciate, obviously, if that the canopy was uh, moved to a uh, to an area. If it's if it's used, I think that's great. But if it's if it's sitting as a as a sign, I think it's it's time that we we address that. But uh, I think it's uh, well done. Good presentation. Okay, council. Anything else? I'll entertain a motion, please. I move to approve based upon staff findings with the conditions contained in the staff report. Second. Motion by John and a second by Josh. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is item number nine. This is ordinance number 9.270 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to approve the intergovernmental agreement between Douglas County School District RE1 and the Town of Parker regarding the sharing of costs for providing police officers to act as school resource officers. Commander, I was going to I was going to say Commandy, but say I didn't commandy. want to. I didn't want to. <laughs> Commander Coleman. I'm just, I Good prefer you in Mayor uniform. and town council. <laughs> um, yes, with this ordinance, um, this is something I just wanted to explain real quickly with you all. Um, this is currently in motion right now at Legend High School. Due to uh, the years past at, some, at Sierra Middle School, uh, we do have a lot of call loads, and for many years now, we, as the Parker Police Department, have provided a school resource officer to be up there most of the time, either helping with that school and also teaching the YES classes. This year, we did uh, work on this IGA with the schools to where they would resemble what we have up at Legend High School and what Douglas County has at all the high schools as far as sharing the cost. So the schools are paying half of the salary for the officer to be up there at that, for that position to help out with all the um, incidents that we have up there. That's pretty much what it is. There's also a 90 hour guaranteed overtime uh, for the officer for different events that they can use the officers for the schools. Other than that, it's, it's mirrored off of the high schools, but this one is a new uh, project that we've, we're doing for the middle school. Anybody have any questions regarding this? Is it going to increase uh, the officer's ability to be on site at all? Or? Yes, that, that's our goal, Perfect. is for the officer to be up there at the school. Um, and the only other responsibility will be that that officer uh, will be teaching the yes classes um, at Sierra Middle School. Do we call this the Britain model? The Britain model. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any other questions? No. no? All right. Thank you very much, Andy. This is a public hearing, so we'll open it up for public comment at 7.42. Seeing no takers, we'll close public comment at 7.42, and I'll entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 9.270 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh and a second by Renee. Council, please vote. 
Motion passes unanimously. Next item is item number 10. This is ordinance number 5.27.5 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend section 3.01.050 of the Parker Municipal Code by the addition thereto of new subsections A, 10, and 11 concerning court costs associated with setting aside certain convictions and judgments. Who better to talk about this than an attorney? <laughs> well, thank you, Mayor and Council. Mr. Maloney. Uh, in your packet this evening is the actual ordinance for your consideration, and basically it lists out all the court costs that the judge is authorized to impose as a part of a different portion of the, the court proceeding. Uh, 10 and 11 are the new items, as the Mayor indicated. And this is a request that was made by the judge and the uh, court clerk at one of your recent study sessions to create a new cost associated with uh, deferred judgments and to set, a, set, set aside um, default judgments. And the judge is requesting the ability to impose costs of not more than $100. Obviously, that's zero to 100, depending upon the reason why someone didn't, say, complete a defensive driving course as a part of a deferred judgment, or in the case of setting aside a default judgment, failed to appear at court, and so the court imposed a default judgment. As the judge indicated during the study session, it involves a lot of staff time in order to process the paperwork associated with setting aside a default judgment or setting aside a, a deferred judgment. And so that is a request tonight. And if there's a plausible reason for setting it aside, the judge can obviously set a lower cost. If it's a, not a very plausible reason, the judge can impose uh, a cost not to exceed $100. Okay. Any questions, Mayor or Council? Council, questions? Open it up for public comment, 7.44 p.m. Seeing no rush to the microphone, we'll close public comment at 7.44, and I'll entertain further discussion or motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 5.27.5 on second reading. Second. Motion by Debbie and a second by Renee. Council, please vote. Mm. Motion passes unanimously. Next item, number 11, is ordinance number 4.114 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance establishing the vertical and horizontal alignment and the grade of Kings Point Way from the Cottonwood Drive intersection to approximately, approximately 850 feet north of the Cottonwood Drive intersection. Mr. Hudson, are there will be any curves on this? <laughs> Section. Just, just some roundabout. slight curves. There'll be four just little mini roundabouts. Ex exactly. Lead to it. Okay. Chris, could you uh, turn on the uh, the document camera by chance? Uh, just earlier tonight, you approved a uh, the annexation of the Kings Point right away for approximately 850, 850 feet. feet. <laughs> and uh, what this ordinance does, it establishes a profile grade and alignment of what we're going to be building for Kings Point Way in the town of Parker. And the southern portion, the southern, it's about a half mile from Cottonwood Drive to proposed Aurora Parkway, which is the white line shown there that it's ultimately going to connect in with Parker Road just north of the county line. And Aurora Parkway is uh, to be determined when it's going to be built uh, at some point in the future. And the southern 850 feet will be built as part of phase one. Phase one is actually a little bit longer than 850 feet. It's to support the development that's going to be going on in the area. But uh, tonight in front of you, um, you have this, this ordinance. And people always ask me why we do this. And the intent of why we do this is that someone that's coming in adjacent to the development can come in and review a set of plans that will be on, record, on record with the town clerk so then they know what they have to tie into at a future date. And that's why we do it. So with that, I'll answer any questions you might have about this uh, profile and grade ordinance. Only question I have before council, just to clarify and make sure everyone who's watching and, and is here is aware, I mean, we, we have zero jurisdiction in the Aurora portion of this, and we're not talking about the yellow portion, which is in Aurora. We're talking about the portion that's in the town of Parker. Correct. Uh, the northern two-thirds of this project is in the city of Aurora, and we cannot establish uh, via Anything. our ordinance the profile and grade for a road that's going to be built in Aurora. Okay. Council, any questions? No. No? All right, we'll open it up for public comment at 7.47 p.m. If there's anyone here wishing to address council. Kevin? You wanna... No, you're good? All right. Can a fire truck get up that 850 feet? Sure they've, already they've already figured that out. <laughs> All right. 
We'll close public comment at 7.47 p.m. and I'll entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 4.114 on second reading. Second. Motion by Debbie and a second by Josh. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item number 12. This is ordinance number 9.136.3 on second reading. Yes. This is a bill for an ordinance to approve an amended and restated funding agreement to that certain funding agreement by and between the Town of Parker and the Douglas County Emergency Telephone System Authority for funding the Viper system. You just got to say that with authority when you say the Viper system to improve communications between the Parker Police Department and other law enforcement agencies. Now, Ron, you have changed so much. Yeah, Ron. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> Ron took off too. Mayor and Council, I'm um, glad to be here and step in for Ron today. You uh, with, uh, you drew the short stick. Is that what? Yeah, happened? sometimes. <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> So the uh, reading of the Second Amendment is just uh, basically to nail down who's actually going to be paying for this. Um, as you know, the 9-11 authority is going to take uh, full responsibility for it. So I, I think in that first reading it didn't exactly specify them doing that as to where this amendment will do that for your second reading. Okay. Anything else to add? Unless nope. you have some questions, that's why Tracy's here. All right. Well, <laughs> she, she got all dressed up and came, you know, and just they figured there might be. So. Right. Council, do you have any questions? Yeah, just real quick. I noticed in there that we stated that Castle Rock and Douglas County Sheriffs are already on Viper system. And with this, since we cooperate with Lone Tree, wouldn't the whole county then be on the Viper system? Correct. Make so it. all three of the uh, uh, communication systems in the county would be on the Viper system. Outst outstanding. Viper. 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 Other questions? Nope. nope. Open it up for public comment at 7.49 p.m. if you'd like to address council on the Viper system. You just like saying I love saying the Viper. <laughs> Viper's just a cool word. All right, seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.49 p.m. and I'll entertain further discussion mm -hmm. or a motion. I, I, move, to, go ahead. I move to approve <laughs> <laughs> ordinance number 9.136.3 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh, second by John. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item, item number 13. This is ordinance number 1.506 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance conveying certain real property by easement to Parker Water and Sanitation District for a water line on lot 1A Main Street Center First Amendment. Alex. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Is this, is this the Viper line? <laughs> Viper water line? No. Yes, sir. <laughs> So uh, the easement before you tonight is associated with the Parker Tap House project, which is proposed um, just to the west of the Parker Schoolhouse off Main Street downtown. The design team has had their utility plans approved by Parker Water and Sanitation District. A part of those plans includes a water line, a new water line loop from the existing dead end water line in the property. Parker Water will commonly request this um, in areas of dead ends to improve the operation and water quality um, served by those lines. So with this project, the um, Rather than route the new water main connection up to Main Street, they'll be routing that back through a town-owned parking lot to Pikes Peak Avenue. Uh, we thought this was preferable to avoid any disruptions in Main Street, obviously. So the Tap House team will be constructing this new water main. Um, it, since it is on town property, Parker Water has requested that the town dedicate a water line easement to them so they have the ability to maintain it should that need arise. Um, having this line will be a benefit to the town properties and buildings in that area as well. So town does recommend the approval of this ordinance granting the water line easement to Parker Water. All right. Alex, thank you very much. Questions, Council? Yeah, just on the map, I just want to make clarified. I mean, I could see here that Mrs. Long is going to get very nervous because she's got an easement box over her property here. The box seems to have drifted away from the property. It says right here, proposed water line easement to be dedicated, and it's not attached to anything. The little floating box that your you're thinking, right there, right there. Yeah, there's a leader that's really faint. That gotcha. Leads. Okay. Yeah, the, okay. the, the shaded yellow area is the easement to be dedicated. Okay, perfect. And the existing water line is the blue? Yep. And, and the, the proposed water line extension is the dotted line in the yellow? Yes. And the hydrant location is the white dot? Uh, the hydrant location is actually on the property. On the property. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Council, any other questions? None. We'll open it up for public comment at 7.52 p.m. Water line easements. Rock and roll. <laughs> All right, seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.52, and I'll entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 1.506 on second reading. Second. Motion by Renee and a second by Debbie. Council, please vote. 
Motion passes unanimously. With no further business before council, we will adjourn at 7.52 p.m. But wait, before you all leave.